Getting back to the idea of divisive education and divisive forms, you, you said that it's divisive because it's not rooted, I, I mean, you suggest it's not rooted in tradition. The point is to sustain an argument that isn't true, that we're not the same kind of thing because our skin color is different. Whereas this other thing about us is so remarkable. The most beautiful and convincing and forceful condemnations of human slavery all revolve around the fact that they are human beings. How do you teach a virtue or a morality that is recognized through the lens of history? This is the subject matter of Aristotle's ethics. In the ethics, he describes the fully operational human being. What, what is that human being? Well, there are two kinds of things, virtues proper to the human being. Welcome back, everyone. Now, I don't need to explain to all of you how critical race theory is really messing up the education system in this country, but there are some great things happening right alongside it. One of these is from Hillsdale College. They're putting through a new curriculum under the 1776 model. Here to talk with us about this is Larry Yarn. He's president at Hillsdale College. And Larry, real pleasure you have you on the show. Thank you. Good to be with you. So why don't we start by talking about kind of what this new idea is that you're introducing. Of course, you're, you're kind of going back and presenting a, a really a more classic take on American education, but is it is it a new take? Is it just taking what was there before? Uh, what is it? This, this new idea is an old idea. All the best ones are. And uh, so uh, the Declaration of Independence opens with the words, in the first sentence, the laws of nature and of nature's God, right? Those laws are eternal. And, you know, eternal things are the best things to think about because they last. Uh, whereas changing things, you only know them while you're looking at them. So, and, you know, especially for educating the young, they need to learn the structure of things. And, you know, the, is the structure in the Declaration of Independence true? Well, if it's true that there's a, a qualitative difference between a horse and a human being, it is, right? So, yeah, and we, you know, and so what's distinctive about what we do is, first of all, it's not distinctive. It's uh, an exploration of things that have been known for 2,000 years. But the second thing is we're teachers. And so our curriculum is, uh, you know, it's targeted to teachers of the young and to the young. You know, one of the th one of the interesting things I saw reading through this new curriculum, just the intro part of it they have out, was this idea that because again the Declaration of Independence and the foundation of this country, which that really marked, it was based on the idea again of you know this idea of law and natural law and God's law. And calling in the, calling this into question, it states in this uh, kind of outline you have, is actually calling into question something much larger than just the United States. It's calling into question the very nature, I think, of human life and law and government. Uh, could you explain this to us? Yeah. Well, uh, what we all want to know is what are we? Are we something? Young kids are very curious about that, right? And if if you tell them that what you are is dependent upon several things. It's dependent on the time in which you're born. It's dependent upon the color uh, with which you're born. It depends upon the gender with which you're born, right? And those are different orders of being. Then that means there isn't any such thing as a human, right? Now, if it's also true that what it is to be a human is changing all the time, that also means there isn't any such thing as a human. And if you raise up kids to think they can be whatever they want to be, eventually they'll find out that's not true because we don't get to be porpoises, right? And, and so it, it's, a, it's a disservice to them to take away from them the opportunity to explore reality. This is an interesting idea that kids are looking for an identity. And this new system, this critical race theory and gender studies, things that you know, whatever you want to call all these things, are really trying to give kids identities, but identities that are divisive. How is this traditional education different well, from well, that? Well, they're, they're divisive because they're artificial, right? So uh, I like to say in my family, we raise children and boxer dogs. 
And the first two years of their life, they live the same. They live on the floor, they eat each other's food. Then about two years, the kids start talking. The dogs never do. Nobody teaches them to talk, they just talk. But then six months after they start talking, they don't even have to leave the house. They know everything in the world. They know the Arctic and the Antarctic. They know elephants and polar bears, right? Well, that's a difference in kind from any other kind of creature. And then to think, to mistake that the color of a particular person is fundamental in the way that is, that's just foolish on its face. And so you can teach them that they are a thing with a great dignity. And see, all of them alike, right? That means whatever color, men and women alike, right? If you teach them that, now they're figuring out what they are. That's very interesting because critical race theory and a lot of these new things teach kids that they're the oppressor or they're the oppressed. They put them into these social hierarchies. I, I Really is what they do. They put them into social hierarchies based on the color of their skin, based on their gender, based on whatever else, and tries to place them in terms of who's more in need of government support than the other, and then who should be put down by the rest of the groups because they're oppressors or not. As opposed to this idea of human dignity, can yeah. you explain to us more about this idea of human dignity? Well, as I say, uh, human, human beings are unique in creation as far as we know. I mean, maybe there's something like us, some place we've never been. But in what, what way are we unique? You can imagine a being more perfect than a human being. We imagine angels. They don't have bodies. They're pure intellects, right? They live in the presence of God. Whether you believe that or not, you can see that that description is superior to a human being. But then, why? Because human beings have the same needs that dogs have. Got to eat, got to sleep, got to everything, right? And so, we're, we're not a perfectly in, but then stick in this thing that's different about us. It is the thing that makes us different, right? These other things don't make us different. This rationality, this divinely inspired thinking soul, that's what makes a human. And, and, then, and then, by the way, if you can explain that to students, and you can. So students, by the way, love to learn about this. I mean, uh, there's a book by Aristotle that I teach all the time called The Ethics. One of my, one of my favorites. It's a really awesome yes. book, isn't it? It's just, it was, I was introduced to me by a graduate stu school professor. He said, in your life, you'll never know a lot of great books. You should set out to know three. And then he describes which ones are candidates. When he gets to this, the ethics, he says, now this, he says, is a perfect book. He means it's just a very beautiful book, and it tells profound things. <laughs> just out of curiosity, what were the other two? Well, that's controversial. I mean, he was a little vague about it, right? Yeah, I see. So here's what he said. He said, the Bible is a different kind of book. So he seemed to be excluding him from this list. Then uh, he said, uh, Aristotle's politics would require adjustment to the modern times, whereas this is a perfect book. So the ethics is one. Then he said, uh, Socrates says that a poet, will come who can write poetry and tra uh, comedy and tragedy. And, and Shakespeare invented a third thing too, history plays. So Shakespeare is one of them. And then Plato's Republic would have to be on any such list. Well, folks, two months on now, and we are still totally demonetized by YouTube. Given the situation where we have to censor ourselves, if we want to really stay on this platform and make it work, We've decided on something else, which is this. We've launched a new platform called Epic TV, e -P -O -C -H -T -V .com. And through this, we're able to publish uncensored content. News that can criticize anything we'd like, news that can talk about anything we'd like, news that can give you real information from any part of the world about any topic, without having to worry whether individuals will censor it. And in this current environment where information is being controlled, where narratives are being controlled, and where anyone who steps outside the boundaries of what is the accepted narrative by the fact checkers, you know, quote unquote, by different big tech organizations, by media organizations, and so on. This is something that we believe is needed for the modern political environment. 
where people should be able to call things out. People should be able to question things. This is the basis of the fourth estate in America. The belief, again, that media should be able to hold government power in check and that media should be able to inform the public about the issues they should be informed about because that is the basis of our election system. An informed public making informed decisions. If you control the system of information, you control the political system. And folks, being a media organization, we can't stand for that. And so again, we have created an uncensored platform, Epic TV. And anyone who wants to support Crossroads or support our broader mission of bringing real news, uncensored news, that's not afraid to stand up for what matters, please check out our website, epochtv.com, E-P-O-C-H-T-V.com. Check out the link below. And folks, please support us there.